in life, we struggle. That struggle can either define you or it can push you to new levels in your life. No matter what, you can never allow that struggle to take your voice. That once you figure out who you are, you go on this magnificent exploration to finding that person. And once you find them, you are ready to amplify. Webster's Dictionary defines amplify as to make bigger, larger, to increase. So by definition, you can amplify your life, your actions, but nothing is as effective as amplifying your voice. In a time where many are silenced, it becomes extremely important that we lift our voices on a personal, a professional, and a political level so that we may give voice to those who have been voiceless for years. For me, I had to find my voice on a personal and a professional level before I could be a political advocate. On a personal level, as you are finding your voice, it's for those negative voices to deter you, those voices that tell you that you're not good enough, you're not worthy, and you don't deserve this. Those voices can push us to the pits of depression. They can increase our anxiety and they can call us to question every ounce of our being. But when the breakthrough comes and those negative voices are no longer heard and the positivity continues to consume us, we are ready to amplify. As we begin to amplify our voice on a personal level, we have to understand that you are a diamond and you are made to shine. People won't understand your shine, but that's okay because that is not for them to understand. After I found my voice on my personal level, it was time that I moved to figuring out what I wanted to do on a professional level. Professionally. I knew that I needed to make an impact. But I can remember back to being about 25 and coming back home after working on my PhD for a year. I wasn't successful at getting my PhD. I just have a question. Has anybody ever had a goal? And then life happened. I can remember going back home and falling into the depths of depression. But my squad was around me, and they surrounded me, and they wanted better for me. They got in the game with me. They called the counselors for me. They critiqued my resume, and they made job referrals. And they gave me hugs, lots of hugs. But most importantly, they let me know that I was worthy that my voice deserved to be heard, and that I was going to be successful despite the things that I had gone through. They let me know that my amplified voice was extremely important, and that one day, everyone would be able to hear. I can remember working in higher education, I can remember applying 12 different times before I finally got my opportunity to get a job. It was only temporary relief because after four years, my grant was not refunded. Have you ever hit rock bottom? You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You just know that you have to do something. Your amplified voice on a professional level gives you direction and discernment. But here I was, and I couldn't hear any of that. As I began to focus and I began to work, I found myself as a single mother and I was unemployed again. But on my professional level, I waited. And then I got the call. The call that said, I finally got the job. Now, don't get me wrong, it was not the ideal job. But I poured myself into that job. I took my leadership skills and my interpersonal skills, and I poured love and encouragement into each 
person that I met. And I moved up very quickly. My professional voice became a voice of encouragement and a voice to say that you can make it no matter what. I can remember one time I was terminated and I thought that my world was going to end. But your professional voice lets you know that sometimes doors have to slam in order for the correct door to swing open. And it did for me. On May 25th, 2020, I, like many people in the world, watched George Floyd lose his life on national television. As he cried out and begged for his mother, for eight minutes and 46 seconds, my heart broke. But in that moment, I thought back to the things that I had had to deal with with racism. I can remember being pulled over because there were too many black people in the car. I can remember countless times being followed around stores. And oh, my favorite, asked, will you be paying with food stamps today? All of my experiences, combined with what I saw for that eight minutes and 46 seconds, let me know that I had to do something. That change had to come. It was Dr. King who told us that a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And at that moment, I knew. I knew that it had to be my goal to amplify my voice louder and louder and talk about these injustices that were being faced by African Americans. I told myself that I'll continue to fight. I'll continue to say their names until things change. Trayvon Martin, Botham John, Ahmaud Aubrey, Brianna Taylor, Eric Berry, George Floyd, Tamir Rice, Philando Castillo, and over 2,000 more Black Americans have been killed at the hands of police since 2015. What's even more shocking is that many of those will not receive a just punishment. Many people in America would tout that it is time to heal. We need to move to a time of healing. But I remind you that we can't heal what we don't deal with. And you cannot heal what you are not willing to face and we will not heal until justice is truly for us all. In the wake of all the social injustices that we are seeing, it became important that I amplified my voice on a political level. I had to get louder and louder and louder until someone stopped and listened. And then on June 6, 2020, they listened. I had been called to give an inspiring, encouraging word in the wake of Mr. Floyd's death. And I felt that this was my time. I had been created for this purpose and this moment, and I had a word and a message that was going to change the world. As I took to the stage and I, I looked out at the crowd and I saw all those different people who were there to support, the movement. They were all from different races and different cultures and different ages. But we all came together that day with one vision to see what unity looks like. But more importantly, we needed to see what unity felt like. In the midst of that, I understood. This is what I needed to be doing. This is what I should continue to do. 
Because during the course of the time that we have, so many injustices are being handed out to different people. Within the past few years, we have seen the rights of so many people recall. We've seen parents separated from their children and caged at the border. We've seen the dream of our dreamers taken away. And we've seen the life of the black American reduced to something that is less than humane. And I come here to say that enough is enough. And that we can do better. We should do better. So today, I'm just going to ask you, what are you going to do? Are you going to get in the game? Are you going to just sit on the sidelines? Because I'm telling you, you have to amplify your voice in the game if you want to have a point to play. What if you could be the reason that someone says, because of you, I didn't give up? What if you could combine your squads together and they take all their talents and they are dedicated to speaking out against these injustices? And because of that, change happens. What if you could take your experiences with depression and anxiety and tell other people that I promise it won't last forever? What if you could be the reason that so many people start to believe in that change? So at this point, it's up to you. What are you going to do?